this is lemon. Whereas this is kurtzman. Come in. Hello. Hello, Professor Lemon. What can I do for you today? Hello, Professor Kurtzman. I have a strong problem with the funding that's going around the school. <laughs> What's the problem, sir? Well, I've noticed that much of the funding to this non-public school has been going to teachers' salaries, textbooks, and other instructional materials, and this is not constitutionally right. Yes, but if the state wants to give money towards these salaries and school materials, you know, even if they do not have to do with religion, they should be able to. Even if they don't have to do with religion, it's still giving money to these religious schools, and it's violating the Establishment Clause, which says that Congress can't establish a certain religion over another. Sir, this is very unreasonable. What we are doing at these schools is okay, and our funds are perfectly fine. I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you on that. I'm taking this to court. This court case, Lemon v. Kurtzman, a landmark Supreme Court case, decided whether or not Pennsylvania's non-public elementary and secondary education act, represented through David Kurtzman, was unconstitutional. This act allowed the state to give aid to non-public schools, but these schools cannot fund specific religious programs. Instead, they funded teachers' salaries and also the textbooks and other instructional materials at this school. They did not fund any religious programs or any certain religion. However, Lemon thought that this was a violation of the First Amendment because he said that there needed to be a separation of church and state. He said that they could not fund the religious private school because he thought it was a separation of the First Amendment from what it should be. Kurtzman wanted to combine this church and state because he just wanted to be able to fund his school. However, Lemon opposed him and ended up, ended up appealing this to the Supreme Court as his case was that it violated the Establishment Clause, which said that the funding of any certain religion or any exercise of a certain religion by the government was wrong. The state, this court case was taken to the Supreme Court, and this case was discussed, and the trial will begin now. I'll now begin the case of Lemon, the plaintiff, versus Kurtzman, the defendant. As I understand, Lemon, you believe that the aid to these non-public schools, even if they don't go to religious teaching, should not be allowed, correct? Yes. And you, Kurtzman, want to be able to fund these schools and aid these teachers, correct? Correct. Lemon, you may now make your case on no funding. Thank you, Judge Berger. The funding of these non-public schools and the aid to these teachers and textbooks is a violation of the First Amendment. The Establishment Clause says that the states nor government should establish or favor a certain religion, allowing freedom of religion, including schools and the materials that go into schools. The funding of these religious schools and these materials violates this because it establishes a certain religion over another and it gives aid to these religious schools being non-public and it, when it is not supposed to because it is from the government. It fails to separate church and state, which is supposed to be separated also by this clause. Therefore, I believe this funding violates the freedom of religion by exercising one over another. Thank you, Mr. Lemon. Now on to you, Mr. Kurtzman. You may not make your case on funding. Thank you, Judge. Our schools have been operating on their own and doing their own thing for many years. We have been making our own little laws inside of the schools, and those include the regulation of funding for teachers, salaries, and textbooks. If we want to give money to these teachers, even if they do not teach a certain religion, my team and I believe we should be able to because of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. We are giving money to certain programs uh, that teach religion, so I think that schools should have the direction for wanting funding uh, for certain programs, even if they are religious. Thank you for these arguments. The justices and I will now discuss this case to decide which of you will win. This could take weeks, even months, so please allow us to discuss. Now I ask that you leave so that we may discuss. Action. The justice and I have made our final decision on this case. In an 8 to 1 decision, we ruled that the funding of these schools, as allowed in the non public elementary and secondary education act, is unconstitutional. 
and is now allow not allowed to be active here on out. This funding violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment as it funds private schools that exercise current religion. In the future, school funding like this must follow rules that are as follows and are referred to as the Lemon Test. To be valid, a statute, one, have a secular legislative purpose, two, a primary effect that neither advances or inhibits religion, and three, not foster excessive government entanglement with religion. Thank you for your time. This case is closed. The justices ruled in an 8 and one decision that the funding of these schools, as allowed in the Non-Public Elementary and Secondary Education Act, is unconstitutional. The funding of these private schools was then not allowed in these schools because it violates the Establishment Clause. In the future, school funding like this must follow the Lemon Test, which is that the statute must have a secular purpose, have a secular, <laughs> a secular legislative purpose, have a primary effect that neither advances nor inhibits religion, and not foster excessive government entanglement with religion. This has been the case of Lemon vs. Kurtzman by Jack Shannon, Socket, Varadevu, and Jack Dunn.